So this was a while ago that I made this with this dot EMB, but now what you can do is you can just have no dot EMB at all, and you can now use the power of cast built into Foundry to use private keys without ever having them in plain text, which is what we want. Your private keys will always be encrypted using the methodology that I'm about to show you, and therefore you should never have to use a dot EMB again. If you come to Cypher and looking for a security review or a security audit, and you have a dot EMB example in your Git repo, I will fail you. So recently we just showed you how to use a .env or use a .env.example to get a private key RPC URL and etherscan API key as environment variables, which is great. However, the issue is that we have these in plain text and that's bad for a hundred reasons. We might accidentally push this to GitHub. We might accidentally show this in our terminal. You always want to do your best to make sure private keys are never left in plain text. So what we can do instead is we can encrypt them using ERC2335, which is just a way to encrypt our private keys into a JSON format. So in our code base, let's pretend our private key is the default key that comes with Anvil. So if I run Anvil, I get this output like this. We scroll to the top and let's say, this is the private key that I want to encrypt. I'll copy this address and then we'll do cast wallet import default key dash dash interactive. I would also highly recommend you not doing it in VS Code and instead do it directly in your terminal or your shell just in case you're using a buggy VS Code for whatever reason. And this will bring us into an interactive shell for us to post our information. I think this is also really helpful because we do have to paste our private key and this will be the only time you have to paste your private key or have it in plain text. But when we hit paste, so I'm gonna go ahead, talk about screencast mode, I'm gonna go ahead and paste it in and you'll see that nothing actually showed up because it does that intentionally. So now I'm going to untoggle screencast mode and then you enter a password. And this will be the thing you need to remember moving forward to work with this private key. So I'm going to do a crappy password. Great. And it'll say default key key store was saved successfully and it'll give you this address here. Now, before what we were doing was we were passing our private key directly into our terminal and you know, we were using a make file to make it look a little bit easier, but in our terminal, it would be something like forge script, blah, 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 some script dash dash private private key, and then our private key, which is bad. So instead, what we can do now, now that we have it in our cast, and we can even do cast wallet list to see our default key in here. And now what we can do is we can run forge script script deploy, excuse me, script deploy fundme.s.sol colon deploy fundme. Right, this is going to be our basic script that we're running dash dash RPC URL HTTP local host 8545. This is if I'm running Anvil, right, which I am running Anvil right now. Of course, this can be Sepolia, this can be mainnet, this can be whatever else you want. And now importantly, instead of doing dash dash private key, and then in plain text pasting some private key, we now instead do dash dash account default key dash dash sender. And this is where this is a little bit annoying, but we do have to copy paste the address of the sender. So the sender associated with this private key. So this is our private key and this is the address associated with that private key. And then we can do dash dash broadcast and then dash, you know, VVVV. And of course, if we were actually deploying to Sepolia, we could do, let me zoom out a little bit. We could do verify etherscan API key, et cetera. But I'm gonna go ahead and run this now. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna compile, it's gonna run through the traces and now it's gonna say enter key store password and it won't let you actually run this without the password. So which I'm just gonna say, okay, and type in my crappy password here and boom, it's going to deploy. So there are some other ways to do this to make it even quicker. There's also a dash dash password file where you can pass it a password file. So maybe in your files here, you'll do like a password or something like that where you put your password in here. You'd of course want to put that in your dot git ignore. But even if you push your password up to GitHub, that is still substantially better than if you push your private key up to GitHub. Just absolutely make sure you're not reusing passwords. And once you have this in here, you can do cast wallet list. You can see your wallet in here. And if you go to your home directory and you go to dot foundry key stores, do an LS in here, you can now see this default key in here. We can also look at this file. I'm going to use cat, but you can really use any command you want. And you can see this, it's this giant blarble of nothing. It's basically this encrypted version of this private key, which again follows this ERC2335. And then in your shell, if you type history, 
you should be able to see a history of the different commands you ran. And if you put your private key in any of these commands, do history dash C. Now, if you type history, it'll be gone. You can also remove your dot bash history, boom. And now their private key is no longer in your bash history. And if you're using a different shell like ZSH, check out where the ZSH history is shown. So should you still take the .env pledge? Absolutely. Anytime you feel yourself starting to think, hmm, I kind of want to reveal my private key, you should have a feeling come over you where you go, maybe I don't want to do that. Again, I know that you are using a development private key for this course because you promised you would be. But when you move to working with a real private key with real money, this is what I want you to do. I want you to encrypt it once and then try to never look at it again. Anytime you see your private key in plain text, alarm bells should go off in your mind and you should say, I shouldn't be doing this. How do I reveal this private key as least often as possible? And everyone should go on Twitter and thank this guy for being the one to finally set this up and merge this foundry improvement. So to recap, you no longer need to have your private key in a .env ever. You shouldn't be doing that anyways because I showed you other ways to not do that. But now you doubly do not need to do that. And especially if you have a private key with real money in it, if you must send a transaction with that private key, this is how I want you to do it. Number one, use Cast Wallet import. Number two, at least use a password or a password file instead of using your private key. And number three, if you do type your private key, make sure to delete it from your history after you write it. Thank you and stay safe.